Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Monday morning devotion time. We're going to be, uh, man, it's, we're in the middle of a cold snap here. I hope that you're staying warm this morning and enjoying uh, the warmth of your home. Hopefully you are warm. If you're not, please let us know. We want to help with that. Um, but just want to say good morning to each of you. And so glad that we can start our day together in the Word of God. Today we're going to be in John chapter 6. John chapter 6 verse 22. So I'll give you a moment to turn with me in your Bibles there. It's good to see you all today. Um, man, you, as, we, as we think about Monday morning, we usually think about the beginning of a new work week, right? Some people dread waking up on Monday mornings. I'm, I'm excited about waking up on Monday mornings. I don't know about you, but it's it's always a joy to serve the Lord. And and um, maybe a little little icebreaker question here: What do you do for work? What's your job? Uh, let's let's see see what what some of your uh, jobs are. Um, you know, I used to work for uh, teaching Taekwondo. I've had a few different jobs in my life. I've, I cut lawns. You know, I've I've um, worked for UPS for quite a while. Uh, that that was a big part of getting me through school and jobs. Enjoyed that job. Um, of course, my current job is I get to I get to be an employee of Merriman Road Baptist Church as one of the staff people there, and I love that job, man. It's great. Um, I see some of you are cleaners, your auto mechanics. Um, some of you are probably retired, I imagine, but maybe you've picked up some employment along the way. Um, but, but this morning as we, uh, think on what our work is in the Lord, um, ultimately we need to understand who we serve. As God's creation, we serve Him. He's our ultimate boss. He's our ultimate Lord. Uh, and we work for him. We work for Jesus. And so how do we do that? Um, well, our scripture per passage gives us instruction about that today. John chapter 6, verse 22. The next day the crowd had stayed, uh, the crowd that had stayed on the other side of the sea saw there had been only one boat. They also saw that Jesus had not boarded the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone off alone. Some boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, Truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Don't work for the food that perishes, perishes, but for food that lasts for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has set his seal of approval on him. What can we do to perform the works of God, they asked. Jesus replied, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. So here in the story, Jesus has fed the 5,000 miraculously. He has walked on water, uh, and apparently the crowd took notice. Took notice that, uh, not, maybe not that he walked on water, but that somehow Jesus got to the other side of the lake, because uh, he wasn't there. Uh, they, see, they see that he was not with his disciples when they boarded the boat and they crossed the lake. Uh, so they see he's gone, they go looking for him. They get in their boats, they go uh, set off to Capernaum, which is where the disciples had set for. And they see him there. They, they come across, they see him there the next day. They saw that uh, Jesus was there, and they ask him the burning question, When did you get here? <laughs> Never showed up somewhere and not see someone you expected to see there? Uh, sometimes that can be a little awkward, but sometimes it's a, it's a, it's a pleasant surprise. Um, I believe they were surprised here. When did you get here? Uh, they were they were looking for Jesus though, 
uh, they were searching for Jesus uh, for a reason. And Jesus, his response really cuts to the heart. Um, in verse 26, uh, it says that, Truly I tell you, you're looking for me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Um, it's, it's obvious that they're searching for Jesus because they got a free lunch. Um, they're not looking for Jesus because they really believe in who Jesus is or what the signs are pointing to who he is. He, it should be obvious of who he is when he had just miraculously fed 5,000 people from five loaves and two fish. It should be pretty obvious who he is because he didn't need a boat to get to the other side of the lake and yet he's there. Um, and so, so here, one of the, one of the things that is initially we need to consider is that following Jesus, the life of a disciple is not treating Jesus like a genie. Um, it's getting, it's not getting him to do our bidding. Uh, yet that's often how people can treat God, how, how they can treat Christ is to, to call upon him for what they want at any given moment. And, and Jesus, I mean, he, he sets a model of service for us. He is compassionate toward us. He knows what we need, um, but he's our Lord. We work for him. And Jesus continues to, in verse 27, to guide the crowd in their understanding of labor for God. It says, don't work for the food that perishes, but for food that lasts to eternal life which the Son of Man will give you, because God has set his seal of approval on him. Um, he sees that they're working hard. They're, they're working hard to follow after Jesus. Obviously, it's not, I mean, they had to get in these boats to, to cross over uh, the Sea of Tiberias, the Sea of Galilee, to follow after him. They're working hard. Uh, but their goal is misguided. Their goal is temporal food. Uh, they enjoyed the free meal. They wanted more. Um, and he's guiding the crowd to see they need to set their hearts on eternity. They need to set their heart on things that truly matter. See, Jesus cares for us. He knows our needs. Uh, he knows we have needs. But that is not the sum of our life. Um, we are called to be laborers in the kingdom of heaven. Uh, Matthew 6, 33 reminds us, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided unto you. In that verse, the, all these things are those daily needs that we have. Jesus knows we have needs, food, clothing, shelter. Uh, he, he knows we need them. But we're commanded and called as his, his laborers to seek first the kingdom of God. Uh, to seek out Jesus first. See, these signs were not just signs in and of themselves that Jesus was performing. Uh, was performing. He was performing these signs because they pointed the people to see uh, a greater reality of who he was. And so Jesus uh, is able, here it says, to give that to us. He is able uh, to give it to you. He says, don't work you know, don't work for food that perishes, but for food that lasts, which the Son of Man will give to you. Jesus can give you the food that lasts today. Uh, he is able to give it to us. And it says he is worthy to give it to us as well. God has set his seal of approval on him. God has chosen Jesus to be the one who would give us eternity. Um, Jesus is the chosen Son of God who, who came down out of heaven, uh, who who is that, that bread of life to us. He is the one who laid down his body uh, as a sacrifice for our sin. He is the one who's raised himself up from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Uh, he is alive and he always lives to intercede for us. He, he lives so that, that we too can live. He accomplished our eternal life. He has made the way to heaven for us. And so how do we do the work of God? Well, Jesus says there is only one work that matters. This is the word of God, the work of God. It says, that, well, the final question that the, the crowds have is, what can we do to perform the works of God, they ask. Jesus replied, this is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. 
and you imagine people kind of scratching their head and thinking, believe, believe. I mean, that's a work. Well, it's the only work that matters to God. He wants us to trust him. He wants us to have faith in him. He wants us to believe in who he is and what he's done. Believing is the only work that matters in the kingdom. It is through belief, through faith in Jesus that we are forgiven. It is through faith that we have eternal life. It is by believing that we walk daily as his laborers in the harvest. Um, again, Pastor Wayne reminded us the only reason that while we, when we are saved, why we are not immediately brought into heaven is because Christ has a mission for us. He wants to join him in his redemptive mission of, of proclaiming the good news to those who need to hear. So first of all, do you believe? Uh, do you believe that Jesus is who he said he was? Are you willing to trust him as your Lord, to walk with him? And who is that one? Who is that one in your life that you need to share that good news with? Make it a point of prayer today. Make it a point to seek an opportunity today. Maybe you don't know who that one is yet. Be prayerful in your day that God would open up doors uh, for you to make known uh, the, the riches of his mystery and that God has brought heaven to earth through Jesus Christ so they too could be forgiven and have eternal life with God. So, so church, uh, let us go today as the Lord's servants laboring in his kingdom, understanding that the only work that matters is to trust in him. Let's trust him today. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we come before you today just grateful uh, to have a day to serve you. Father, we understand that, uh, that you desire to lead and guide us. You desire to lead and guide us not simply to, to temple, temporal things. Uh, Lord, we have needs, and you know we have needs, and we're thankful that you meet our needs. But Lord, you desire that our hearts would be set on you, uh, that, our, that our hearts would be set on heaven. So, Lord, help us to walk with perspective today. Help us to walk in your grace, that we would serve you, uh, that we would understand that our service that really matters is a service of faith, that we would trust you at your word, that we would believe in the Son that you have sent, who died and rose for us, that we'd understand that you have accomplished all that's necessary for our redemption. And our, our task is, is to remain in you, to walk with you by faith each and every day, every step of the way. Lord, guide us in our steps today that we would be led by you to those who need this good news, that we would be bold in the opportunities that you give us to make known to them the mystery of God, which has been hidden for ages in Christ, but is now revealed. And so, Lord, let us, let us be your agents of revelation today. Let us speak the word that you have given to us in your Bible. So, Father, we, we look forward to those opportunities today. Lord, look forward to, to making you known as we walk with you by faith. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of working for you today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, brothers and sisters, it's great to see you today, and God bless you uh, in his service of faith.